marching band sophomore year. This was kind of the first year we were really introduced to uh, Mr. Eric Baker over there. While the juniors, excuse me, the uh, current seniors knew who he was, and this is the most awesome guy you'll ever meet, all of us sophomores were, who's this guy who's cheering for Howland? I don't think I've ever seen him in the high school. But from then on, Mr. Baker became a, uh, a mainstay at every game, helping us work up that school spirit we were lacking in the first few. Um, our theme for marching band was spies, lies, and bad guys in disguise, which could be the best rhyme I've ever heard in marching band. Um, so a few of the songs we played were uh, Mission Impossible, which was notable for its 5-4 time signature. For all of those of you who are not in band, that means we had to march 10 steps instead of 8. And after, as Claire pointed out, we were drilled and drilled and drilled into marching eight steps in five yards, it was an adjustment that not many of us could make. <laughs> so we spent lots of time, many hours, and again violating probably some child labor laws, working on Mission Impossible. And in the end, the final part of the drill was an enormous snake that took up a great deal of the field. And those lines were supposed to be straight. Instead, it was more of a curvy line. And try as we might, we really could never straighten that out. Uh, another song we played was uh, Ponder Replay, which we played with the 8th graders. And Mrs. Moore knew three words to that song. Pon. the Replay. <laughs> and the rest was just kind of a little bit of scatting, some random syllables and other such things. Um, and this was also the first year that we played Final Countdown for Script Tigers, which set up a pretty long-standing tradition now uh, that we've continued this on. So in that year, it was kind of momentous. Um, also, one of the more notable events, at least in my personal experience uh, during this year, involved a microwave. <laughs> Someone's gloves were quite wet after a game, and her hands were really cold. So, someone had the idea to throw them Mrs. Moore's microwave so they would dry out <laughs> and warm up. They did warm up. <laughs> and they caught on fire. <laughs> so, Mr. Esbeck, reacting quickly, grabbed the microwave <laughs> and just pulled it out of the socket and ran across the hall outside the I entrance and just threw it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> and as I stood there, watching, along with several other people, we just couldn't understand what happened. <laughs> to some extent, I still can't. <laughs> so after marching band ended, and we were all quite sad, um, it got to symphonic band, and we began playing concert music. So one of our songs was called Creatures of Dreams. And at first we thought this might be a pretty cool song, because there were different parts that all described different sorts of animals. It wasn't. Everyone agreed on that, including Mrs. Moore. So it came to the point where we were just hoping for contests so we could stop playing the song. <laughs> and in fact, it seemed fate was with us as well. For in the pre-contest concert, we had two bassoons. They had a very important part in one of the movements. And lo and behold, that day, they both got sick. <laughs> so we were a mess. <laughs> in the end, we eventually ended up not playing that movement but it was still quite stressful for Mrs. Moore, and therefore, for the rest of the band. Uh, our march that year was Invictus, which, as I'm sure some of the baritone players remember, had some of the worst, fastest notes ever. And again, that was one of those things we had to go through over and over and over until we really just wanted to stop playing the song. And the final one, this is a good one, actually, was Pusha. And this song also gave birth to one of the greatest metaphors Mrs. Moore has ever come up with. It, I cannot lie, was potentially 45 seconds long. She wanted us to play a certain set of notes very lightly, so she described it as, think of the gypsies prancing through the fields, carrying their buckets of milk, and we can't let that milk go sour. <laughs> Can we it went on a little longer, like but I'll leave it at that. Um, after that, we had gotten a one at district contest, which is very exciting. And the choice came up whether to play at states or not. 
And we ended up not going to state so we could work on some music that was outside of the contest list. One of which was Metroplex. Mm -hmm. now, those of you in Symphonic Band that year will remember it. that was also a really fast, really complicated piece. Again, we worked on it, and worked on it, and worked on it. <coughs> and we also had a piece known as Trail of Tears, which was supposed to represent the Trail of Tears the Cherokee Indians went through with authentic Indian sounds. <laughs> Native American sounds, I mean. Which is Dadish Konk Yoni Iwasu. And at one point, Mrs. Moore was again in the midst of one of the metaphors, and she needed to know what a male Indian was called. So, perhaps foolishly, she asked the band, Band, what do you call a male Indian? And Kevin Ross promptly replied, Chirag. <laughs>